Hello, Magic Community on YouTube. I'm T1 Glistener Elf. Before we get started, shoutouts to my baby Evangeline. This is her teddy bear. While she can't be here, here's the bear. <laughs> her cute little bear. I'm making this video as a response to the Tellurian Community College professor's uh, examination of reprints in Shadows Over Innistrad and Magic the Gathering in general. Before you watch this, you should absolutely check out the professor's video. There's a link in the doobly-doo as well. Please go watch that. Actually, watch that first. Alright, are we caught up? Great, let's dive into it. I think that he said it best when he said, Now all of this is most likely due to Wizards of the Coast trying to please collectors by not destabilizing and lowering prices of higher priced cards. But that's why we need reprints. The card costs are too high to play the game. I understand that it is a vital part of this game that cards have value. Yes, that they increase in value and yes, reliably retain value value, but this has come up in odds against the needs of people to actually get cards to play the game. And I hate to say, but he's a hundred percent right. The way that I've come to view trading card games, there's a spectrum that goes from wholly player oriented to wholly collector oriented. Now you can be a trading card game that only caters to players, but you can't be one that caters only to collectors. But that being said, you can primarily cater to collectors. Now, of course, trading card games do fill a wide range of the spectrum, to be sure. Magic the Gathering is more collector-oriented than a lot of people nowadays, at least, especially those that have just gotten into the game, give it credit for being. There's a reason, after all, why we have, for instance, the reprint list. As Marrow himself put it, the reserved list came about in reaction to the release of Chronicles in 4th edition back in 1995. Both sets included cards that previously were very hard to obtain. Many players complained, and Wizards, in response, made the reserved list as a promise that they won't do this again. So if you're wondering why Wizards is so reluctant to make more reprints, it's because they're worried about ticking off collectors who do see cards as literal investments. Now, that's certainly not to say that collectors can't also be players. But there's a reason why MTG stocks exist. It's because there is that mentality that that's what they are. Investments. Is this unhealthy for the game as a whole? Maybe, maybe not. Your opinion may vary. As someone who used to own... four tropical islands, four bayous, four badlands, two savannah a taiga, a plateau. Those were all of my duels. I still wanted dual lands to be reprinted. I wanted them to get off of the reserve list or for the reserve list to go away, even though I could have lost hundreds if not thousands of dollars on that. And the reason is because I want more players in this game. That's my priority. And coincidentally, that's also Eva Bear's priority too. Those collectors are deriving a great deal of value from the fact that players play those cards. It isn't necessary for someone to play a card for it to be valuable. Scheherazade, Proposal, Black Lotus even, are cards that don't see any real play. I mean, a vintage championship every now and then, or casual kitchen table magic, or sentimentality in the case of something like Splendid Genesis. But this isn't the way that things have to be. Let me give you an example of a game that does things differently, I think better, and in fact this is probably my favorite aspect of this other game. You ready for this? Yu-Gi-Oh! Now before you dislike the video and close it, please give me a chance to explain myself. This is not going to be a Magic the Gathering or Yu-Gi-Oh! is better one game than the other kind of video. I don't want to do that, I don't even think that one game is better than the other. They're different. They're peanut butter and ketchup. You, you use them in different ways. I may not be a great example. <laughs> They're Street Fighter and Super Smash Bros. They're different games. You play them in different ways, you learn different things from them. But this isn't even really about the games themselves, this is about the companies. Wizards of the Coast and Konami. Because these companies have taken radically different directions when it comes to how they look at reprints, and I think that 
Wizards of the Coast could learn something from Yu-Gi-Oh! Because, in case you didn't know this, and I know this is going to come as a shock to a lot of Magic players, but Yu-Gi-Oh! is a bigger game in terms of cards sold. And you don't have to take my word for it. Take it up with the Guinness Book of World Records. Uh, link in the doobly-doo, by the way. Magic may be a bigger game in North America, but Yu-Gi-Oh! is a bigger game globally, and that's all the more surprising when you consider all of the things that Yu-Gi-Oh! doesn't have going for it. Yu-Gi-Oh! is a game that's six years younger than Magic. Yu-Gi-Oh! doesn't really have a limited scene. You can play sealed, but that's barely a sanctioned format. And Yu-Gi-Oh! really only has one real format, as far as sanctioned events go, anyway. It's what we in Magic would call Legacy. But despite that, a Yu-Gi-Oh! deck, a top-tier Yu-Gi-Oh! deck, can cost you about a thousand dollars, maybe a little bit more than that, tops. As any long-term Yu-Gi-Oh! player can tell you though, you can get a tier one or two Yu-Gi-Oh! deck for far less than that. And bear in mind, if you want to try to get a legacy deck in Magic, two thousand dollars is where you ought to be if you're getting top tier. Maybe not burn, maybe not death and taxes, but yeah, if you want to get any of the three-color Delver builds, if you want to get Stoneblade or Deathblade, if you want to get Sneak and Show, I'm sorry, that's you're going to have to shell out some cash, right? So why is Yu-Gi-Oh! such a cheaper game? Well, the main reason is because they reprint cards to high heaven. Is that an expression that's used anywhere else in the world? Or is that just sort of a southernism? They reprint cards like they're going out of style. They reprint cards like there's no tomorrow. You, you get the idea. For example, there has been a reprint set for Yu-Gi-Oh! from every year from 2004 until the present. 2004, Dark Beginning 1. 2005, Dark Revelation 1. Also 2005, Dark Beginning 2. 2005, Dark Revelation 2. 2006, Dark Revelation 3. 2007, Dark Revelation 4, USA only. 2008, Retro Pack 1, Europe only. 2009, Retro Pack 2, Europe only. 2008, Dark Legends. 2008, Gold Series. 2009, Gold Series 2, 1009. 2010, Gold Series 3. 2010, Legendary Collection. 2011, Gold Series 4, Pyramids Edition. 2011, Legendary Collection 2, The Duel Academy Years. 2012, Raw Yellow Mega Pack. 2012, Gold Series Haunted Mine. Also 2012, Legendary Collection 3, Yugi's World. 2013, Legendary Collection 4, Joey's World. 2014, Premium Gold. 2014, Legendary Collection 5Ds. 2015, Premium Gold 2. And that's not even counting Duelist Packs, Star Packs, Structure Decks, of which there are a lot. The Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG has been tremendously good at reprinting cards for players. When a card is released, for about the first year or so, you can expect it to be about as expensive as it's going to get, because either the card will be reprinted, or something in the archetype will be banned such that the card is not worth as much anymore. And yeah, that has its own issues. They have a very strong ban list, and yes, that does contribute to prices being lower, but the reprint policy has a lot more to do with it, frankly. Now, the professor also brings up another very good point about reprinting staples. I know Wizards often sees these things in terms of immediate profit. Standard sells packs, not modern. But if you print modern staples in block sets, then both standard and modern will sell packs. Limiting reprints might actually be limiting profits. It is certainly hurting the player base. And you know what? He's right. Obviously. This, I think, is the number one reason why Yu-Gi-Oh! has sold more cards than Magic. It's not because it's a better game, it's not because of anything like that, it's because they reprint staples. People want to play these cards, that's why they're staples. And the company, in this case Konami, sees that there's demand, and if you satisfy that demand, you make more in profit. That's just how it works. Now, I'm not saying that Wizards of the Coast, or Hasbro, is a dumb company. I'm not saying that at all. They know what they're doing. They're not doing this because they think that it's worse for their bottom line. In the long term, maybe they think that it is better. In the case of the reserve list, it may be because they think they're going to be sued, but notwithstanding that, maybe they're onto something. 
There is, after all, something to be said for people getting into the game of magic because they want to invest in cards. See, when you go out and you buy your shock lands and your fetch lands, or legacy or vintage, your duels, you're investing in those. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It attracts certain kinds of players. It attracts players that can't afford to play that kind of game. Is that better for a game? I don't think that it is. But it does serve as a way to get more players in, and that kind of player is more likely to buy more packs because they have more money to spend. It's a legitimate strategy. And to a certain extent, it's paid off, right? As far as I'm aware, the largest tournament held for any trading card game is still GP Vegas from 2015. By quite a bit, right? In fact, that's probably the number one selling point that I've heard Magic players in general say to newer players to try to get them into modern. Look, your standard cards are going to rotate. You might want to get into an eternal format, most especially modern. It's the one that seems to be getting the most support. That's also why so many modern players get so frustrated when a card gets banned in that format. Professor, if I can speak to you directly, I remember when you were talking about how someone that you got to do a deck tech for your channel. He was playing Angel Pod, and then Birthing Pod gets banned, and he doesn't know what he's going to do. That's one of the downsides to having a game that has an investment mentality. In Yu-Gi-Oh, for a number of reasons, most of which I think are actually healthy for the game and the format, bannings happen very frequently, and players, for the most part, just sort of brush them off. They've come to expect those things. Yu-Gi-Oh is not an investment game. And a lot of that has to do with the game being relatively cheap to get into. Again, that doesn't mean that you can, you know, build a Yu-Gi-Oh deck that's top tier for the same price as a popper deck in Magic. That's not how that works. But compared to not just Magic, but specifically Legacy, Yu-Gi-Oh is so much cheaper to get into. And for that matter, to switch decks. Now, on a bit of a side note, the professor did accurately say that one of the reasons for reprints in Magic being so poor in general in these reprint sets is because they're made with draft, or limited in general, in mind. And that's true. And while Yu-Gi-Oh! does have a sealed format, it's mostly constructed. That's the one major format. So, of course, Yu-Gi-Oh! is going to focus more on reprints for the sake of constructed. They don't have to worry about adding in cards just for the sake of sealed. Not really, it's not that big of a format. It's why Saffron Olive correctly predicted that in Eternal Masters you're not going to see thousand dollar boxes. Those predictions that assume that it's going to be anywhere near that high are based on the assumption that you're going to have a lot of cards that frankly need to be reprinted. But that's not something that they're going to do. That's not something that Wizards has given us a history of doing. Not with Modern Masters 1, or definitely not 2. Not with Conspiracy. It's just not something that they're inclined to do. I mean, for crying out loud, name one Sunburst card, other than Pentad Prism, that sees play in any constructed environment. Okay, maybe in Block, right? That's it. Come on. We don't need all these Sunburst cards. They're there just for draft. That's it. I'm actually not as harsh on Modern Masters 1 as he might be. I think that that was a great, both constructed and limited environment. The one time that I got to draft, I drafted Dredge, so... Maybe I'm a little bit biased because I loved the deck so much. I couldn't do that with any other format that I've ever been around to play. But it did have some good reprints that were actually played cards in the format. My favorite being Manamorphos, of course. And they weren't all rares. They weren't all... Mythics. It had Lava Spike and Lightning Helix. It had Pestermite. It had Rift Bolt. It had Relic of Progenitus. Modern Masters had a bunch of playable cards for Modern, which is certainly better than Modern Masters 2, and frankly gives me some hope for Eternal Masters, for whatever that's worth. Now, I know what a lot of you are thinking. Doesn't this hurt collectors? Don't. Why would you want to invest in Yu-Gi-Oh if you want to be a collector? And the answer is... You may not. I can only speak from anecdotal experience, but going to Yu-Gi-Oh! events, I don't see as many people come with their trade binders. When I do see them, it's mostly cards from the newest 
two or three sets. And that's all that they're really trying to get rid of, right? Everything else you might find. But the cards tend not to be worth very much, right? That's part of why it's so easy to get into. If you're looking to get into a game that is a good investment, I'm sorry, Yu-Gi-Oh! is probably not the game for you. But if you're looking for an environment that's easier to get into, Yu-Gi-Oh! is probably the way to go. Look, I know that this is something that's probably going to touch a nerve for some people, but, again, just anecdotally, there's a reason why when I go to Magic the Gathering tournaments, at least around here, it's mostly uh, older people and whiter people, right? And Asian. When I go to Yu-Gi-Oh! tournaments, the field is a lot younger and a lot more colorful. It's a lot more diverse. And there are a number of reasons for that. The younger part is, I mean, Yu-Gi-Oh! has a TV show. What do you expect? But the reprint policy does make it more likely for a lot of younger players to get into the game because now they can afford it. And the same is true, frankly, of groups that, at least in my society, are more likely to be economically marginalized because the cards are generally cheaper and once you buy a deck, it doesn't rotate, and unless bannings happen, you can keep the deck. You're set. You're solid. Am I saying switch from Magic to Yu-Gi-Oh? No! No, 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 no. I had to sell a lot of my Magic collection, and I'm still playing Magic, even if it's largely with proxies. Not at sanctioned events, but even if I have to do something like that, because it's such a deep game. It received one of the 1994 Mensa Select Awards. That says a lot about your game. Chess didn't get that, Yu-Gi-Oh! didn't get that, but Magic the Gathering did. That being said, what I am saying is that it's easier to get into Yu-Gi-Oh! That's just the way that it is, because of the price barrier. And it's something that Wizards should learn from. I'm not saying this is the way that things must be. I wish that they would change. I wish that it were easier to get into Magic. I wish that I could have more legacy players against whom to play, because it's my favorite format. I wish that I could find more modern players in my area who are running Tier 1 and 2 decks, because right now a lot of people around here just can't afford to, and so I get less practice, less experience against top tier decks. And that's something that I'm hopeful will change. Shoutouts to the professor for his awesome content. And once again, shoutouts to my little baby for having an adorable teddy bear and being adorable herself and all that jazz. I love you very much. Anyway, I'll see you later. Bye bye. All right, we'll see you later. Hey, hey. Oh, ready? One, two, three. Say bye bye. Hi.